Hi folks, Dave Yelk here. Today with Mr. Dante. Um, giving you another uh, episode of, of a trailer loading a horse at Liberty. And when I say Liberty, I mean no halter, no lead line on the horse. Uh, they're loose in a round pen. Um, I have noticed uh, a lot of times people are talking about at Liberty, uh, they mean on a lead line. Anyhow, it doesn't matter. Um, this is intended to help a horse that can be physically difficult to load. Oftentimes they've already taught humans, uh, here's what I'm going to do. You're going to walk toward the trailer and I'm going to pull the lead line out of your hand and bolt. Or you're going to try and load me in the trailer and pull forward and I'm going to lean back and not move my feet at all. Or run over you with my shoulder or, I mean, there's a long list of things that people teach horses to do to avoid getting in the trailer. Um, and oftentimes when I get them at that point, they're very difficult to handle physically and this takes their physicality out of it. Um, a couple of things I should mention, the timing on this required to make it work um, is important and it's something you learn by doing. Um, and if you, so, you know, it's nice we post videos, horse trainers post videos online and it's kind of like the old, uh, uh, learning by DVD, it doesn't work all that well because you don't really learn the subtle cues a horse can give you and you don't uh, have the timing that a trainer has along with the observation skills that they might have. And I'm not saying don't try it, but uh, it's not as easy as it looks. Um, and I'm doing it just to, to show you. And and if you have the wherewithal, you can do it. Um, I just thought and I've done this uh, eh, a couple of times, you think? Anyhow, so here's what we're going to do. And yesterday I, I did Bella, and I'll be uh, I'll be grabbing her in a little bit. But I thought since I had my my trailer and truck already lined up here, uh, Mr. Dante is uh, so I haven't actually put him in a trailer. So, but I've been told that if he's by himself, he's not going to get in a trailer. He's too scared. Now I've spent a little time with him, ground handling him. Uh, also, he's normally very buddy sour, and when he's afraid uh, away from his buddies, he has a tendency to yell and scream and go silly. Well, you can see he's not yelling and screaming and going silly because I've spent enough time with him to develop a relationship of leader-follower, uh, God, not God, using active and passive leadership. And if you have any questions about active and passive leadership, you're welcome to ask me anytime in any way that you can get a hold of me. I've got a website, you can contact me through that, or through my Facebook page or, page or Messenger or whatever, or even here on YouTube. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out Dante. I've never tried to put him in the trailer, as I said. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to try to lead him in the trailer now just to see how this goes. I mean, if I don't have to do all the work involved in, uh, in the uh, Liberty work, so, uh, setting, uh, getting the horse to the point where it goes in at liberty can take hours. Oh, I should also mention, this is not a fashion statement for me. <laughs> I know I might look a little bit weird with my clothes, but uh, I, I'm making videos while I work, and this is how I work. It's a hot, sunny day, um, and uh, when I, I found when I put sunscreen on my arms, it closes the pores up because most sunscreens are waterproof nowadays. So it seals your pores and your sweating doesn't work and you're actually hotter with sunscreen on. So uh, my daughter actually sent me these uh, arm sleeves, which uh, you can get anywhere online on your favorite shopping place that free delivers if you're a Prime member. Uh, and uh, anyhow, they're really great. What I do is I soak them down along with the thing around my neck put them in the sink, cold water, wring them out, put them on while, you know, the whole way that the uh, <coughs> evaporation works is when the water evaporates out of it, it cools down. If there's any breeze at all, it's cool. I started out wearing these mowing the lawn and I found out they're pretty handy down here. And usually I don't wear shorts, but if I'm not getting on a horse, I'm going to try and be cool. So all this stuff is about me trying to stay cool uh, and the other cool thing about these is as the water dries out, if you're sweating, your sweat replaces the water. So it gives continuous cooling. Pretty darn cool. Yeah, looks silly. Oh well. Uh, 
So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and try and lead him in first and see how that goes. And then I might try sending him in with tapping him on the rump with a dressage whip. We'll see how that goes. And if none of that works, we'll go ahead and do it at liberty. And of course, this is a, uh, I guess I should come out to talk. I don't know if my Bluetooth is going to work in there. This is uh, a three horse slat load trailer. It's pretty big inside. I've got the, I've only got one divider in and it's, it's held open right now with bungee cords. So it's just one big open space. Should be easy for him to get into. Now, most of the time I insist that horses come out of a trailer by backing out. And you can see no ramp. For, for my opinion is a no ramp trailer is easier than a ramp trailer because the ramp is simply introducing another obstacle that is physically unstable when a horse steps on it. So when I'm teaching a horse, I like to use a two horse straight load small trailer um, with a ramp because that's, in my opinion, the hardest thing. But like I said, this was already backed up here. Thought I'd check Mr. Dante out. And I'm going to ask him to back out if he comes in. Wow. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Ready. Good job, Mr. Dante. Holy moly. Calm and relaxed. Well, it's not completely calm and relaxed, but enough. Now, you saw a couple of things that I, I do. I like rituals with horses. Horses love rituals. If they know what to do and what to expect, given the certain conditions, then it's easy for them. So one of the things I like to do is uh, once we come, well, you heard me ready, step. When there's a step down and the horse is going to step into nothingness, it really enhances their confidence if you let them know when that next step they're going to go isn't going to step down on a trailer but steps into space. So I go ready, step, and I change that word, the tone of my voice with the step so they know this foot is going down into nothingness. And you do that enough times and it gets really easy for the horse. And my, my horses actually prefer this quite a bit. Um, the other thing you saw is I like the ritual of once you come out of the trailer, you're going to back straight 10 steps. We're going to count to 10 together. And the reason for that is, you know, you just trailered your horse somewhere. Where are you? Has the horse ever been there before? Do they know where you are? No. And, you know, if you're at a showgrounds or something and you've got loudspeakers, 20, you know, 200 rigs, 400 horses, flags flapping, you know, stuff everywhere. I've seen horses come blasting out of trailers, pull the lead line out of their hands, of the, of the handler's hands, and take off because it's just too much of an environment. So my concept is while we're backing 10 steps, counting to 10 together, you can look around all you want and see where we are. And then, of course, what I'm going to do after those 10 steps is walk the horse around where we are and let him look around, see where the other horses are, see what's going on then tie them to the trailer and groom and tack. So just a thought. Um, so that was pretty handy. Uh, this time I'm going to throw this. Now, I haven't actually done that much groundwork with him. I've done nothing with a dressage whip. So I don't know how he's going to do with a dressage whip. So I'm going to introduce him to it here. And I'm going to teach him to go back and go forward with it. Uh, because I'm going to use this to ask him to get in the trailer by himself. Now we start with back, and I tap the hoof like this. He leaned. I quit tapping. He leaned. I quit tapping. Good. The tapping is active leadership. When I quit and I say good and maybe even put his head down, this is passive leadership. Oh, I almost fell backwards. 
Okay, you want to combine active and passive leadership at the same time if you can. By the way, you might note his feet are a mess. Yeah, they were overgrown on their shoes. And I pulled his shoes yesterday and we've got a fear of coming to put a good trim on him. Uh, but he needed those shoes off pretty bad. Good job. Active leadership. Passive leadership. Part of passive leadership is offering peace. Giving them a chance to process so they can learn. Good job. And you can see things are speeding up now because he's learning. Good. Good. And now we'll try the old tap on the hip point, which means go forward. This is putting energy behind the drive line. And obviously he doesn't know this. That's okay. And he's reactive. That's something you can say generally about Dante, is he's been taught to be reactive by humans. We're not going to give a horse a chance to think and respond. Instead, we're going to put tons of pressure on him so that he reacts and does the right thing. Well, it'd be really nice to have him not be emotionally reactive and have anxiety when you ask him to do things. So you got to give a horse a chance to think. And when do they learn? When you quit and wait. Learning takes time. They got to digest. They got to process through their head and go, what the hell just happened? He was tapping me back there. I didn't like it. I did this. He quit. Huh. Then you repeat it. And he goes, hey, that happened just like that last time. Three times. And they go, oh. Now this time I'm being more specific. If you go back and rewind, you'll see last time I tapped him, he moved sideways away from me. Well, I really want him to go forward, okay? But because he moved his feet, I quit last time so he could learn, oh, I'm supposed to move my feet. Well, now I'm gonna expand that, this is called shaping behavior, uh, to, yeah, I want you to move your feet, but there's a specific direction I want you to move your feet in, not just any old way. Definitely not backwards. Good, good, good. He's got anxiety. He's pretty stiff. And right now he's actually, his neck and head and jaw are tense and he's actually pulling against me. But I'm just going to keep a little pressure. This is fairly gentle pressure and I'm going to wait for him to release. He just released. He stopped pulling. Now his head probably didn't drop, but he released his muscles. There we go. There we go. There we go. You could see the, the looseness in my lead line here. As soon as he, he gives the desired behavior, I want to give an immediate release. You want to release earlier, longer, and more often. <laughs> because that creates the learning. I'll wait for you. And yeah, my videos can get long because you're seeing everything unedited. This is raw. And I take as long as the horse needs to learn at their speed. And good training is really boring. It should be boring. If it's not boring, the horse probably isn't learning very well. He's still pulling up against me. I'm just going to wait him. He's all tense in his whole front end. There, he just let go of his muscles. And you can see, once he lets go, he softens up and he responds. 
He's just not used to being treated this way with respect <laughs> in a teacher-student relationship. I don't even like to call myself a trainer. I like to call myself a teacher. Sometimes I'm the student. A lot of times. Okay, that'll do. Good job. Active leadership immediately followed by passive leadership. There we go. Good lick and chew. Ah, that's a release of anxiety. His anxiety was building. And that the release of anxiety and allows his brain to think and learn. If you are highly emotional, you've got high anxiety, you can't learn anything. It's hard to think. You get rid of it. I wish, I wish humans had the same autonomic response that horses do regarding that licking and chewing. And we kind of do. We have some little things, but they don't work very good for us. And our anxiety comes right back up. There we go. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. Nothing personal. Just need when I ask you to step forward, I need you to step forward. Thank you. Good job. Good. Good. By the way, this is the foundation for everything you ask your horse to do for you. When I ask you to, take one step back. When I ask you to, take one step forward. That's moving. Everything you want the horse to do except stand for the farrier involves moving. So this is the foundation for nearly everything you teach your horse. Good, you're okay. Yep, there's my mini, Mr. Speedy. But I'm good, glad to see you're not screaming for your buddy. Good job. Okay, now that wasn't much. And it might not be enough for him to get in the trailer, but I've already seen he'll follow me in the trailer without much problem. So, and he might go in and turn around, but I'm going to try to send him in and see how he feels about going in by himself. Good. 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 So he just volunteered three steps for me. I asked for one. He gave me three. I appreciate the gift this morning, Mr. Dante. And I appreciate you doing that out here and not in the trailer. Yes, lick and chew. One of the most important aspects right now is to keep the nose pointed in the trailer. Focus on the problem. The problem is, I want you to go in the trailer. You might not want to go in the trailer, or you might not know how to. Solve the problem for me, Mr. Dante. Good job. Good job. Good. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You can see I'm not using the lead line to drive him back or to pull him forward because he outweighs me ten to one. Well, not quite ten to one, but seven to one, let's say. You know. The pull on him is absurd. I want to give him cues and communicate to him what I want him to do. If we have the correct relationship and I communicate to my servant what I need my servant to do for me, then my servant's going to do it if I treat him with respect, kindness, but I give him directions and there's consequences when they don't happen. That's again combining active and passive leadership. Good. 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 Good job.
Don't leave. One more. Ten. Thank you. Good job. So the idea here, I'm asking for a step forward. I'm not asking for him to get in the trailer. I'm focusing on when I ask you for a step, take a step. Well, if the trailer's in front of you and I ask you for a step, it can be a little difficult to take that step. So I'm rewarding him by quitting and giving him an opportunity to learn that I asked you to step forward, there's something in front of you you don't really want to do, but you took it anyhow. And if I repeat that often enough, it's going to get easier and easier and easier because it's not a problem. It's easy for him. And I already found out when I let him in that he can do it. But about going by yourself requires some security, self-security, security from within. So now I want to ask for a little more before we get the same release. He's been putting one foot in. I'd like to see him put two feet in this time. Good. Now, because that was hard, I can see how hard that is for him. I don't want learning to be difficult. Excuse you. So I need to give him a little bit of a... This is passive leadership. Give him a little break, mental break. Let his emotions come down. So he can learn. His anxiety was really high and he was struggling. So, come out here. Let his emotions come down. Practice a little leadership. I want his nose even with my shoulders when we lead. No matter what speed we lead at. And even if we go backwards. Good. Good. Ooh, well done, Mr. Dante. Okay, so my process is I walk toward a trailer like this, especially if you've got a straight load with a butt bar. I want to send the horse in so I can raise the butt bar from here. So I turn around 180 degrees, throw a lead over, because I want to talk to this end of the horse. That end is the engine and the brakes. This is the steering wheel. Pulling on this end is a little silly and doesn't work. I mean, theoretically, if the horse knows how to lead, it'll work, but not if the horse doesn't want to do it. Driving the horse from behind and engaging their engine is much more efficient. Good. And I mentioned in yesterday's video that there's five phases to horse learning as you're teaching him things. And you can see I'm tapping him on the back, back, on the bottom, the hip, and he was backing the whole time. That can be regression. Phases two and four of horse learning are regression. You'll have all the regression in between those, though. What do we do about it? Nothing. Oftentimes, you go back to the foundation for the skill you're teaching, which would be, give me one step back and one step forward if he regresses. And you can see, this is prolonged regression. He's trying to avoid the trailer. You don't blame him for that. That's just intelligent. You know, if you're going to put me in a little tiny closet under the stairs, I'm probably going to look for ways to avoid going in that little closet under the stairs. Is that working for him? No. It does get him further from the trailer, but it doesn't but it doesn't help me leave him alone. 
So there's a good chance this is a behavior he has learned in the past to avoid going in a trailer. I'm just going to back away from the trailer. You can't get me in the trailer. Ooh. He just licked and chewed on his own. So I'm going to take a moment here to let him digest whatever it is and let him internalize that calmness and peace. Good. Nice and soft in the front end. I barely touched the lead. His head dropped. Good. Very nice. Very nice. And that's long enough. I can feel it. Good. Good. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And I need to send him to an osteopathic vet. As I watched him back right there, he back, his, his rear end is swinging left and right as he's trying to step backwards. Tells me something in his hip that's stuck. There's a bunch of things it could be. Uh, could be sacrum, sacroiliacs, one or both, uh, psoas muscles. There's, there's something back there that's stuck, so his back end isn't working right. So we got to get that fixed. Make an appointment with the osteopath. They'll fix that right up. Good. Good effort. This is called a super release. The first time they do something, quit. Quit immediately. Go away. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Not only did he appreciate that quit, but he followed me. Now he left me. Because he's not... He's he's has difficulty... Maintaining relationships with people. And I suspect that's from his past. Good boy, but he's coming back to me. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Very nice. I'm very impressed. I only wanted two feet on, and you volunteered and gave me all four feet and went on. I was going to ask you to come back off after the first two feet. It's okay though. I know. Come on. Come over here with me. Good job. Can you hook up? Huh? Oh, very nice. Very nice. Good job. Good job. So, I'm feeling like I don't need to go through the energy on my part of working him at liberty and sending him in um, at liberty. I don't think it'd be very difficult, but the main reason I do that, as I mentioned before, is a, if a horse is too physical and it's almost unsafe and they've learned avoidance techniques that work and pull away from you and rear and do all kinds of other things. He's not doing any of that. So, there's, I don't know how many ways to teach horses to get a trailer. 15, 20, 25, 30. And depending on the horse, none of them might work. Liberty works pretty good. I have never failed. Um, if you search around on my YouTube pay, uh, channel, you're, there's a video about a Mustang uh loading at liberty he was a tough case um and i don't have the whole process i only have the end result which was he'd be standing on the other side of the round pen and i'd tell him uh, journey i think it was his name journey go get in the trailer 
We'd walk right around and climb right in, turn around and stand there. This was the end, the finish. And stand there and Ty said, Journey, you can come out now. So if you want to, it's like a 15, 20 second video. If you want to go see that, that was one of the worst cases. I worked really hard to make that happen. Load, please. And that's where I like to introduce a command load, please. When I say those words, I picture a horse getting in the trailer. And the real cue for them to get in the trailer is when the picture in my brain changes to a horse walking into the trailer. Because when you change pictures in your head, your body physically changes. They're not gonna read the picture in your head, but they're gonna read your body change. By picturing the same picture, when you want the same behavior, you can make your body very consistent and you don't even have to think about your body. You just control the picture in your head. Come on. No, I didn't want you to go forward. Sorry. <laughs> he goes, you kissed. I think I'm supposed to move. Or maybe his anxiety was too high with me. He, I, haven't, I haven't really done much in the round pen with him at all. He's actually here. Um, with a, another horse in training, he was so buddy sour they couldn't leave him at home by himself. Uh, he would have torn the place down. So he came, uh, so I figured, well, he's here. I might as well help him change how he feels. He doesn't need to feel that way. And I can feel the difference. Oh, I do have a video of three videos, part one, two, and three, of Dante and his friend Nickel, the very first session in here with me. Uh, that session um, was where I was trying to teach them to think independently. Come on. And look at me for support, not each other. Those are three long videos. So I'm looking him in the eye right now, which you have to be careful with. Visual, uh, looking at a prey animal right in the eye, especially if you're a predator, is visual pressure. So I want to glance down. I look him in the eye to get his attention. And when I get his attention, look down. The looking down is the release of the pressure. But when he's walking around by himself like that, I want to make sure he knows I want him with me. Good boy. Good boy. I'm going to walk with him. Let him lead a little bit. Good. 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 Good, 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 yes, I can see how ambivalent you are. This is really hard for you to hook up with a human. I don't think you've had a lot of fun in your past with people. Easy, easy. His anxiety is coming up. Good. Good. And then it dropped. Oh, very nice. He walked up to me and presented his forehead. Good job. Good job, Mr. Dante. What a good horse. Load, please. And you can see the two failed attempts to get in on his part. That's an example of regression. I'm not, I haven't perfectly learned this task yet. I'm not through all five phases of learning. So my behavior isn't always going to be consistent. And generally, I like to say in phase one, you get about 80% success, successful behavior that, you're, that you've been teaching and 20% failure. Phase two, 
regression, 40% success, 60% failure. Phase three, it's about 70-30, not as good as phase one, curiously. Phase four is a disaster area. You get zero performance of the desired lesson. Uh, it's when things go wrong. The horse looks at you and says, I don't like you anymore, I hate you. I have no idea what you're trying to ask me to do. Even though they may have been in and out of the trailer a hundred times, they were in phase three during that time. As soon as they click into phase four of learning, they have no idea what you want. It's pretty weird. And that's when bad things happen between the human and the horse because the human gets frustrated and says, oh, you're just being an asshole. You know how to get in that trailer and you're refusing to do it for me. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's not what's happening. And then once, uh, once you get them through phase four, and the way I do that is I go to the foundation of getting in and out of the trailer, which is give me one step back when I ask and give me one step forward when I ask. And then I put them away. They were just successful. They successfully executed the foundation for what I'm teaching. I can quit. Curiously, 95% of the time, overnight, their brain digests everything. And they go through phase four on their own in the paddock overnight. I get them out the next day and they're in phase five. They go in every time 99 out of 100 times the one time they don't go in they know what you want they're just going i don't want to do that right now for whatever reason good boy i really like your personality you've just had a difficult life i think and one of the other things if you zoom in on his back and look at his top line um while he's here i'm treating him for insisted small strong guiles which is, some folks call it the silent killer because there is no way to diagnose it from the outside of the horse. But small strong galls are one of the most common things that infect horses. And one of the stages of development can is third stage larval, which happens in the horse's body. And sometimes we don't understand this, although a lot of folks can make claims otherwise, those, those third stage larvae can burrow into the tissues of their large intestine and colon and create a little cyst and live in that cyst and draw and live off of the horse's nutrition. And the first indicator of that is the top line of the horse. Um, now sometimes that's also a tooth problem. If, they, if the teeth haven't been getting done properly, um, that can also cause a reduced top line. But if you zoom in here, this is his spine. This is his tissue of his back. This should not be below his spine and his spine should not be protruding. There's only two uh, dewormers that the manufacturers claim kill insisted strongles. De Ivermectin is not one of them and the only thing is moxidectin and a Panicure Power Pack, which is five days double dose Benbendazole. Um, and there's a lot of folks that say Benbendazole has is almost ineffective and everything's resistant to it, which is why the manufacturer went to the power pack, double dose five days in a row. Because unlike other poisons, fenbendazole is very dosage intolerant. So you can give a horse a whole lot of it and not kill them, but kill the things inside. So I actually, with uh, osteopathic vets, we've developed a protocol, deworming protocol, to fix this problem. And I'm not gonna talk about it here online. If you wanna know, uh, private message me or something. But uh, I'm not a vet and I can't give you veterinarian advice. <laughs> but I can tell you that it's fixable. Um, and that we've, uh, there's a lot of horses in the US. And by the way, is a fecal count gonna show you stage three larval insisted in your horse's tissues? No. They're not adults, they don't lay eggs. You can have a zero count and have 50 million insisted small strongles in your horse's body, making the horse slowly starve to death. So, now his teeth weren't really good either. So, we fixed his teeth already, but we're also deworming because we had no knowledge. He changed hands, and we, the new owner had no knowledge of his deworming history. And by the looks of his teeth, we assumed the care hadn't been all that great on Mr. Dante, so never hurts 
to go through this protocol to kill and strongles, and I'm pretty convinced he's got other indicators as well. Load, please. By letting him come out all the way on his own when he feels a need to, I'm also yo-yoing his emotions. He goes in, his anxiety goes up. He comes out, his anxiety goes down. If I do that often enough with you or a horse or anything, you can learn you have a choice on how you feel. You can learn you don't have to have any high anxiety. 34 years in the military, I'm an ex-soldier. So... You know, part of the way we train people and desensitize them to combat um, and desensitize them to anxiety in such a way that PTSD with proper training isn't going to happen. The folks, most of the folks that get PTSD are folks that did not have lengthy training to prepare them for war emotional preparation and anxiety so anyhow um, if i take his emotions up and down up and down up and down he's gonna go wow when my anxiety is high i feel horrible not a good feeling and he's gonna learn no i'm not gonna go there i'm gonna stay calm and relaxed <sighs> yep so also I'm teaching him to unload himself at the same time I'm teaching him to load. <laughs> and right now, I don't care whether he comes out forward, backward, turns around, doesn't matter. I want him to feel good about the whole thing. He does not need to have ang high anxiety because you're leading him toward a trailer. Now, I'm not saying that during the trailering process, when you're going down the road, that it's the most pleasant experience in the world. It's not. Obviously, it depends on the driver, but sometimes the driver doesn't have any choice on the driving conditions with the people around him, her. <laughs> so we do our best. Good boy. Good boy. Now, this time, I'm going to stay there, and I'm going to ask him to stay in the trailer until I let him out. What? Yes, I know. Load, please. Good boy. Good boy. And he does turn around. Ah! And I would never recommend that anybody at home do this. Because ah, many horses will be right happy to jump right out of there and jump right on top of you. Nope. Now he can't stay there forever. So how long can he stand there with high anxiety? Until he can't. So I want to give him the opportunity to understand. I'm not going to make you stand there forever until you feel real good about it. Yes! Yes, that sucked. I got to give him a better release. I was looking at him, and I can see that caused him a lot of anxiety as he walks around trying to get rid of it. Good. Good. Yes, I know you didn't like being held in there. Just for grins. Because <laughs> I, I, I know he can do this now. I'm going to send him in at liberty. So first thing I'm going to do is make him at liberty. Good. Good. So I'm going to refute a book titled Horses Never Lie. 
is there are certain conditions that horses do lie. When a horse has a bridle or a halter on, they lie to you all the time. Because they are forcibly restrained and they know it. When you take a halter or bridle off a horse, then they never lie. Because their feet show you exactly how they feel. So if you don't want your horse to lie to you, take everything off your horse. And then they'll tell you how they feel. One of my favorites is, can you attack your horse with nothing on their face? Every unbroke I've started has nothing on their head the first time they get saddled. And they stand perfectly still. If they don't, I haven't done enough work to get to that point and I got to go back. But the point is, or should be able to stand at liberty and do the things you want them to do. Pick up their feet, fly spray. I've had horses here, middle-aged horses. You couldn't fly spray with, without anything on their head. You had to hold them still or they'd walk away. They're afraid of the fly spray bottle. What? Yeah. And you just don't want your horse afraid of common things you do. Fix it. Good. A good boy. Good. A little bit of nasal discharge. I noticed that yesterday. Could be mild allergies. Could be right now we're going through a really dusty dry spell. Here. It's either muddy or it's dusty. One or the other. Oh well. Sucks to be us, eh? So I use my 30 foot long dressage whip. So I can stand here in the center and direct the horse to do what I need him to do. Communicate with him from 30 feet away. Good boy. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah, I know I said I wasn't going to do this. But I think you can and I think it might help you. Help you feel a little differently. Good. Nope. Good. 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 What's important about this is the horse is making a decision to go in the trailer. I want to teach good decision making for my horse. You can't force a horse to do anything. They outmatch you physically. You have to use your larger cranium and convince a horse to make a decision to do the things you want them to do. He definitely does not want to turn toward the trailer. So you can see how he feels about going in the trailer. He's doing it, but he doesn't feel good about it. Good. And I want him to make a conscious, voluntary decision. I want him to weigh consequences and go, what's a better deal? This or that? Teach him to look for the better deal. Right now, the better deal is getting in the trailer. Now, he doesn't think that's a good deal. Good. If he'll put his nose in that trailer, I will turn around and walk away. And I might even turn around and walk away before that to help him out. I was going to walk away. I thought he was going to turn toward the trailer. 
and that's an opportunity right there for me to leave take all the pressure off so he can learn oh hmm he seems to want me to be near the trailer oh yeah oh but right now he has no idea he can't read my mind Whereas, oh he wants me to go in the trailer i thought he was going to walk me up and spank me with that stick nope i'm just going to turn you and say get in the trailer well that fly spray doesn't work very well does it I want to make sure as he gets close to the trailer that I change the picture in my head to him stepping in the trailer so he can learn what that body posture of mine looks like when I change the picture to get in the trailer. Load please. So when I said the words, that changes the picture in my head. Good boy. He was coming to me until I turned and faced him. And that's probably because I have a lariat in my hand. You're okay. It's just a tool. It's nothing you gotta be afraid of. You're okay. Might need to divide this. I thought this was going to be a short session for y'all, but I think we're heading toward an hour. So I better check it. So this is now part one, and if you look around, you'll find part two of this next. <laughs>